chicos, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? I hope you guys are doing good. Today I'm presenting uh, stem changing verbs or irregular verbs. These are verbs that have an E that switches to IE in the stem and verbs that have an O that switches to UE or UE in the stem. These are on page 129 and let's go ahead and take a look at them. I'm going to share my presentation with you. So we have already seen some of them, starting with the verb tener. Um, but today we're going to look at a few of them together. So let me see. Okay, so I titled this verbos irregulares. So these are irregular verbs because they don't follow the pattern that verbs normally follow where as you guys have seen in the past, you only have to focus about the ending and the stem always remains the same. In this case, you not only have to look at the ending of the verb, meaning whether it's an AR verb, ER verb, or IR verb, but you also have to look at the stem. So the first part of the verb, the part, the part that is not the ending. So we call them stem changing verbs. There are three types. Some that end in, that have an E that switches to IE, some that have an O that switches to UE, and some that have an E that switches to I. Those we're gonna look at separately. So today we focus on this first group. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so I said we have already seen an example of verbs that are stem changing verbs, and I'm talking about the verb uh, tener, which has an E in the stem that switches to IE. So let me refresh your memory. The verb tener, it means to have. So when we say I have, the stem change doesn't happen, but it happens in the other forms. So for example, let's do our little chart that we usually do, our conjugation chart that we do with all verbs. And then we have nosotros, ustedes, ellos, y ellas. Okay, so if it's about me, I have, let's say, a black car. A black car. I could say, yo tengo un carro negro. Okay, now if it's about you, as I said, this E is going to switch to IE. So it's not going to be um, to tenes with the ES ending because it's an ER verb, but it's going to be to tienes. Uh, let's say you have a red car. I will say tu tienes un carro rojo. Okay, so as I said, you have an E here that became an IE. Tú tienes un carro rojo. Why do, did I change the ER to ES? Well, we have to go back to um, the, the video about verbs that end in ER. If you have an ER and the subject is you, tú, you need an ES at the end. So that means you have, tú tienes. I cannot say tú tengo, that would be incorrect. Even though tengo means have, it only means have for I have, not for you have. So, tú tienes un carro rojo. Okay, and then let's see what happens with the third person. So, usted, el, ella. Usted meaning you, sir, you, ma'am, or he, el, o ella, she. Let's say my friend, my best, my best friend, she has a, I don't know, a pink car, let's say. So my best friend is a female, so I'm going to say ella. And then ella tiene, and just an E because we need an E for the third person. Ella tiene, and let's say, un carro rosado. Okay. Now, if it's about nosotros, this is the exception to the rule where the E does not switch to IE in the stem. It just remains the same. And this is a rule that applies to all stem changing verbs. When we're talking about the nosotros form, the, um, the stem does not have the stem change. 
So it's not nosotros tenemos, it's just nosotros tenemos. Okay, so let's say my husband and I, we have a white car. So we have a white car. Nosotros tenemos un carro blanco. Okay, and now for the third person plural. So ustedes, meaning you guys, or ellos, ellas, they male, they female. They, they have a gray car, let's say. So again, we do have to pay attention to the stem, the stem change, ellos tiene. And then of course the ending that goes with them is en. So ellos tienen, let's say, un carro gris, a gray car. Okay, so this is just refreshing your memory about the verb tener. We have already covered this, but today we're gonna be focusing on a few verbs that have the same stem change to the verb tener, the e switches to ie in all of the forms except nosotros, which we said doesn't have a stem change. So let's look at that. So, oh, here I have some pictures to remind you about the verb tener. So in this case, how would you say she has two dogs? You remember? I'll give you a second to think. Is it él? Is it ella? It's ella, right? It's a female. So ella tiene dos perros. We could say for puppies, the word is cachorros. So ella tiene dos cachorros. Okay. Bien. Um, for this lady, she has a white cat. So how would we say that? E ella tiene un gato blanco. Again, the verb is tener, but I didn't say ella tiene. I didn't say ella tiene, I said ella tiene. And I'm using the E at the end because that's the ending that goes with ella. So I cannot say ella tienes o ella tienen, it's ella tiene, she has. Okay, now this is a family. So we're gonna say ellos, they. They have a small dog here, as you can see in the picture. So ellos, the verb is tener. Tienen, y en for ellos. Ellos tienen un perro pequeño. And in this picture, this family, uh, they have a big dog. So let's say ellos tienen, again, the ending still has to agree with the subject. And the stem change, of course, we cannot forget. So ellos tienen un perro grande. Un labrador, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so what are the other verbs that have the stem change E to I E? So we have the verb, the verbs comenzar y empezar. They both mean to begin. They have an E here. Notice that it's gonna, for example, in this verb, you have two E. So you, if you're kind of like confused, you're like, okay, oh, which E is it gonna be if the verb has more than one E? It's gonna be, it's always gonna be the E that is closest to the ending. So. The ending is the AR part, right? So in this case, there are two E's, but this one is the one closest to the AR ending. So that's the one that is gonna switch to IE. And I'll show you an example. Um, so again, cerrar has an E that switches to IE. Mentir has an E that switches to IE. Um, pensar, preferir, again, there are two E's here. It's the one closest to the ending. The ending is the IR part. So, and then the last one, querer, here, that E is gonna switch to IE. The ending, the E in the ending, that doesn't switch, it's just the stem part, okay? The verbs, you have to remember there, the two parts of the verb are the stem and the ending. The ending can be AR, ER, or IR, and then the stem, the stem is everything else before the ending. Okay, so here I want to use the verb uh, querer. Okay, so we are in like a restaurant, there's a waiter. He's gonna ask the guy here in this picture if he wants a lemonade, because the two girls are drinking lemonades. One is drinking a strawberry lemonade, the other one looks like maybe a mint lemonade or a regular lemonade. So I wanted to use the verb querer, 
two ones for him to say, do you want a lemonade? I know it sounds kind of weird to say, do you want? Normally we, we might say, would you like? But here to just keep it simple, basic Spanish, we're just gonna say, do you want? Even, even though it may sound a little weird, okay? So the verb is querer. We have an E that needs to be switched to IE and then we have an ER ending. So the subject is you, do, do. So do you want a lemonade? So the question should begin with do, okay? Now the verb querer, we start writing it normal and then we have the E, it's gonna switch to IE and then, then the R here. And then what ending do we need if it's um, second person, you, should be ES, okay? So tu quieres, I wrote it too, too big. Tu quieres una limonada? And let's say the guy's like, yes, I want a lemonade. Si, yo, qui, e, ro, una limonada, por favor. Limonada, por favor, that's please. And then gracias. Okay, so the E became IE, right? Yo quiero. And then I use the O ending because that's the ending that we need with the first person. Any verb, it doesn't matter what verb it is, and it doesn't matter the gender of the person speaking. You just need an O at the end to signify I am the one that's doing the action. So I want, yo quiero una limonada, por favor. Gracias. Okay. All right. So here we're going to use the verb preferir. Preferir means to prefer. We have two E's, but we're going to choose the one closest to the ending. And here I'm going to say that the waiter is asking the girl if she prefers a salad or a soup. It's still in the, the second person form in the form of you because he's talking directly to her. So do you prefer a soup or a salad? So he's going to say, do prefieres una sopa o una ensalada? And let's say she's going to say, I prefer a soup, please. So again, yo prefiero una sopa, por favor. Okay, so again, O ending because it's about I, yo, I, I prefer, yo prefiero. But the second E switched to IE because this is a stem changing verb. Muy bien. Here, um, let's say this, uh, this couple is gonna have some drinks. The guy wants a beer, the lady wants uh, a glass of red wine. So here the question, he, the waiter is going to ask is, do you prefer a beer or a wine? Okay, so he's asking both of them in the form of you guys, so in the form of ustedes. So he's going to say, ustedes prefieren, prefieren, the form of ustedes, you guys, ustedes prefieren una cerveza o un vino. Okay, here he could say a bottle of beer or a glass of wine, but I'm just keeping it simple, okay? So cerveza, beer, vino, wine. He's, the guy is gonna say he prefers a uh, beer. So he's gonna say, yo prefiero una cerveza, por favor. Gracias, okay? And she's gonna say, yo prefiero un vino, por favor. Gracias. Okay, and that's how we use stem changing verbs. Now, these are, the, these are some examples with E to IE. Let's look at a couple with O, with an O that switches to UE. The first one that we can think of uh, is the one to eat lunch. So that one is almorzar. Almorzar, it means to eat lunch. That O is gonna switch to UE. 
So if I want to know at what time you eat lunch, I could say, a que hora almuerzas? Let's say if I want to know at what time you eat lunch every day. Almuerzas todos los días. A que hora almuerzas todos los días? And you might answer, yo almuerzo a las 12. So that's a typical time that people usually eat lunch at 12 or 1. So we could say that. Yo almuerzo a las 12. Um, maybe I'm asking you what time you're going to come back. Let's say we are somewhere and then you're leaving and I want to know what time do you come back? What time are you coming back? So the verb is volver. Volver. It has an O that switches to UE. Volver. Notice that I'm not saying volver because the V sounds like a B in Spanish. So it's volver. So if I say, ¿A qué hora vuelves? At what time do you come back? What, what time are you coming back? ¿A qué hora vuelves? Yes, ending because it's an ER verb and it's in the form of you. ¿A qué hora vuelves tú? What time do you come back? Or are you coming back? You could say, vuelvo in the form of I. I come back. Vuelvo a las tres. Let's say you, you're coming back at three. Okay, and so that's that's the that's the pattern that we use for stem changing verbs. Now you have to pay attention to two things: the ending, of course, and now the stem. I'll make another video for you guys about verbs that have the e that switches to i. But for now, I think this is this should be good to help you understand how to use them. If you need any help, of course, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help. Okay, ciao.